Hi, welcome back to Life is a Treasure podcast. I'm your hostess, Michelle Dura, and I am so happy to have you here. And if this is your first time listening, I would like to welcome you. And I hope that you would subscribe and stick around for more episodes. So this is a bonus episode that I decided to create on the topic of divorce because I've get a lot of questions about how did I get through my divorce, how did I forgive myself and other people, and just how to deal with divorce. So that's what we're going to be talking about in this bonus episode is dealing with divorce. And it doesn't have to be divorce. It could be a long-term relationship that's ending, a separation, or a breakup. Either one of those can be extremely painful and can cause a lot of challenges in how we deal with them and how we heal. I'd like to start by reading a few quotes that I think are really, really good along this topic. So the first one says, Some people believe holding on and hanging in there are signs of strength. However, there are times when it takes much more strength to know when to let go and then do it. By Anne Landers. Before I go into the next quote, I feel like I just want to touch on this and talk about it in relationship to my own divorce experience. So I um, found myself at 40 years old going through a divorce after a 15-year marriage with two children in the middle. And to say that my life was turned upside down is an understatement. It was honestly the most difficult, extremely painful experience that I have ever went through, experienced in my life up to date. Yes, I share a lot about my abortion experience. I have a whole episode about that with uh, Tears to Treasures, my story. But with my abortion... um, it was different, you know, that it was way different. So with this uh, divorce, it affected my ex-spouse's life, it ex- and it also affected my two children. And also, we merged our families for 15 years. So not only was I losing my marriage and losing my spouse and I was also losing that a big part, half a part of my family and a huge part of my life. So um, I find myself at 40 years old having to go through a very devastating divorce. It doesn't matter who wanted it or, you know, I hear so many times in divorces like, well, she wanted or he wanted. The fact of the matter is it takes both people to make it work. And I know that, yes, sometimes one person's still willing to and the other's not. But, you know, in order to make a relationship work, it requires two people committed and dedicated to seeking the best for not only themselves, but for the others involved. And there's no room for shame, for blame and shame and finger pointing and, you know, one becoming a victim and the one, there's no place for that. And did we go through this? Yes. I think uh, most divorces go through all of those. And I'm going to get into that more when we start talking about the um, experiencing the emotions that follow a divorce. So I want to go back to the quote. I'll read it again. Some people believe holding on and hanging in there are signs of strength. And that was me. And that was how I felt for many, many, many years. That even if my marriage was just barely hanging in, by a thread, I believed that holding on and hanging in there were signs of strength on my part. However, there are times when it takes much more strength to know when to let go and then do it. And that's where I got to the point of we realized that we're not happy. We're not teaching our children what a healthy marriage really is. And you have to, we had to, for us, for us is evaluating what's best. Is it best to live this way? Or is it better to separate and take care of each ourselves and start a new life again? Neither one are easy decisions. But the truth is, that decision is only up to those two people. And so many times, other people want to tell us what they think we should do based on their beliefs and their experiences. 
and how to make it work. But the fact of the matter is no one knows what's going on behind closed doors. No one knows what's going on in someone else's life. We may think we do, but we're not living in their shoes and we're not sleeping in their bed. So it's really hard to know what other people are going through. And so I just want to throw that out there. You know, whether you're going through a divorce and people are looking from the outside and not understanding, it's not their place to understand. Most importantly, surround your people, surround yourself with people who will support you. Surround yourself with a support system of family and friends. Not who will speak bad about the other party, but that will uplift you and support you and be there for what you need. And so, yeah, sometimes it takes more strength to let go and to actually go through that process. I know from my own life, I definitely resonate with that quote. Um, Let me read a second quote that I really, really like. And it says, letting go doesn't mean that you don't care about someone anymore. It's just realizing that the only person you really have control over is yourself by Deborah Reber. That is so, so true. And many times um, in marriages, we might stay thinking that that other person's going to change, that we're going to love them so much they're going to change. But the fact of the matter is, we only have control over ourselves. That's truth. That is the truth. And so if we're waiting for someone else to change, you know, good luck. Because really, we're the only ones who can change ourselves. So, and we don't want to be in a marriage or a relationship with someone who's trying to change us. That doesn't feel good and that is not healthy. So, With that comes the decision of, okay, they're not going to change. The situation isn't going to change. I need to move on. And how do we move on? That kind of leads me to my next quote that I really love. It says, and so rock bottom became the solid foundation on which I rebuilt my life. J.K. Rowling. That quote right here really hit me. (laughs) And so rock bottom became the solid foundation on which I rebuilt my life. You know, after going through my divorce, life shattering, devastating, just a big old mess, (laughs) I hit rock bottom. You know, as we go through a divorce, we go through experiences of emotions and it's the same. It's a grief. It's a grieving process. You know, I didn't really believe it. I had been working with women and men through a grieving process of abortion healing. And I really didn't think that a divorce would be similar, but it was actually the exact same process. I had to go through my five stages, the denial. I can't believe this is happening. I, 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 my marriage was over a long time ago. I'm not going to go through grief. Those were denial. Those were my denying my emotions, really. And Then once I got through the denial stage, I went into anger. (laughs) How many of you can relate that anger stage where we're really angry about this process and what it's done to our life and our dreams and our hopes and our, when those sink in, we feel a lot of anger and maybe anger toward ourselves. I have an entire episode. (laughs) Go look it up. It's on self-forgiveness. Very, very healing for you to listen to that. After we go through denial and anger, we find ourselves sometimes in that bargaining stage and maybe even to the point of bargaining for your marriage to work out again or your relationship. So you may go back and say, okay, let's give us another try. You know, and you kind of bargain with yourself, with your, your partner, with your life. And then from that bargaining stage leads us to depression. And that's where I feel that rock bottom You know, I hit rock bottom. I was so depressed. I was actually suicidal at times because it was just so much pain to bear. And not only my own pain, I was feeling the pain of my children. That to me was harder. That's why I say my divorce was harder than my abortion. Because to 
feel and to see the pain that I was partly responsible for in my children's eyes, how it devastated their life. That caused me a lot of shame and guilt. So much so that I became very depressed and I really felt like they might just be better off with their dad and I didn't really need to be here. And those really horrible thoughts came. And that's when I really reached out to my people, my support system, and they helped pull me through. They helped me see the light and that things were going to get better. There was going to be a rainbow again after the storm. And maybe you're listening and you're deep down in your depression right now from a divorce or a breakup. Please know that this will not always be this way. It feels like every day you wake up and it feels hard and it feels dark and scary and you just don't want to do it anymore. But my friend, you can come out of it. I know because I was there where you might be and I had to see the light. I had to lift up my head. I had to wipe the tears from my eyes and realize that, you know what? I need to accept where I am. I need to accept this divorce. I need to accept what it's done and I need to accept myself for who I am, where I am and realize I did the best that I could with what I had with where I was. And this decision led me to where I'm at, but I have a choice to let it bring me down to the depths of the darkness of this earth, to the bottom of the pit, or I could step up, brush myself off, and say, you know what? I'm still breathing. I'm still here, and I'm still alive, and I can make my life a treasure again. Yes, my loss has happened. My dreams have been devastated. My hopes have been diminished. The commitments have been seized. But you know what? I can have new dreams, new hope for a better future. I can commit to myself and to my children that I'm going to be the best mama that I can be for the rest of my life. My life is not over because with a divorce, devastation, breakup, we feel like our life is over. But our life is over for that chapter. Our story is not ended until we take our last breath here on earth. So close that chapter of our life. Let it go. Pray for peace for you and the other parties. Send them love. And you will experience inner joy like you've never experienced before. So sometimes our rock bottom can become our solid foundation that we can rebuild and start a new life again. A life that we can treasure again. And during my divorce, my sweet daughter brought me a book as a gift. And it was called My Single Mom Life by Angela Thomas. And I will link it in the show notes. But that book transformed my life. It gave me glimpses of hope for my future. It helped me to read her story and know how to handle myself better. I didn't do a good job, (laughs) probably why my daughter brought me the book, but I was trying and, you know, we all are hurting and when we're all, when we're hurting, it's hard to help other people. So my goal for you is to learn how to heal ourselves first. Self-care is crucial during a time of breakup, but the last thing we want to do is take care of ourselves, but it's the first thing we need to do. And I also have an entire episode on self-care. It's called Self-Care is Not Selfish. Next, we should help our children deal. That means bring them to therapy, to counseling. Bring them to, let them have their friends. Let them have their, their support system. They don't have to rely only on you. Because remember, you're broken too. So bring them somewhere where they can talk about their feelings. They can experience their emotions and express them in a safe environment with support. And most importantly, have new hope for, for your future. New goals, new dreams. Revisit your purpose again because our identity is changed. <laughs> you know, I didn't know who I was. I, I mean, I was like... I was a wife for 15 years. Now I found myself as a single mom. 
So I had to find my new identity. I had to take a break from the work I was doing and process my own pain, process my own experiences. Then I was able to start helping other people again. So I just want to say that I realize that right now we're going through a changing time in our world and going to therapy in person may not be feasible. So I just want to share that there's amazing online therapy. Um, I've mentioned this before in some of my other episodes. I'm a strong believer in therapy and you can find doctors as well on therapy online websites that you can meet with via video. So know that even if you can't go in person somewhere, there's still help available pretty much anywhere you live via the internet and video. And so you can look that up online therapy, even for your children. They have for children as well. So if you have children and they're struggling and you're going through a divorce, then I encourage you to look that up and find someone who specializes in divorce family uh, issues, and especially helping children cope. So I really hope that this will offer some inspiration and encouragement to some of you listening, whatever stage of this process that you might be in. Maybe you're in the beginning stage, maybe you're in the middle, maybe you're on the other side, but you're still trying to figure out how to move on. I really, really hope that this will offer you some encouragement to know that there is life after divorce. I was 40, I am now in my 50s, and I am happier than ever. So, you know, it is possible to find love again and commitment again. And don't close off your, I closed my mind off of that for many, many years, and I wouldn't allow myself to have a relationship that deep because of the divorce. And I just want to tell you that when we do that, we're missing out on so much more love. So I just send you so much of my light and my lessons that I've learned through my own experiences in hope that it will help to encourage you and to inspire you that you can get up and create a new life for yourself and you can find your new identity and accept your new role and so uh, if you would like to reach out to me if you would like a free one-on-one session you can do so through my website lifeisatreasure.com I always have my website link in the show notes as well as all my podcast episodes are right there if you click on listen to the podcast you can easily listen and find any of them If you're not familiar with a podcast app, you can find it on my website. So again, I hope that this bonus episode will help some of you. And it's just my thank you for listening to this show. And please reach out to me. Let me know where you're listening from and what your takeaways are and how I can further help you in your life to make it a treasure. So until next time, sending you all my peace, love, and joy. Thank you for listening to Life is a Treasure podcast. I'm Michelle Durand, and I'd like to personally invite you to join us and continue the conversation in our free Facebook group, Life is a Treasure podcast. The link will be in the show notes at lifeisatreasure.com. You can also find my social media links on the website as well. Please reach out to me and introduce yourself. I'd love to hear where you're listening from and what your biggest takeaways have been. And as we begin to share our secrets, our stories, and our struggles, we find that others can have the courage to start sharing theirs. And this is how the healing process begins. So please help us spread the hope and the healing to others by subscribing, reviewing, and sharing this podcast. And make sure to tag me on Instagram at Michelle Marie with two E's, Durand, D-U-R-A-N-D, with hashtag Life is a Treasure podcast for a chance to get a shout out on the show. And also visit lifeisatreasure.com for all the resources and freebies mentioned. We believe that everyone is 
equal, and worthy of healing and unconditional love. And we promise that if you invest your time and energy to do the inner work, you too can transform yourself and create a life that is a treasure. So you can live authentically, love unconditionally, and laugh wholeheartedly. And until next week, peace, love, and joy.